Log on to drphil.com. And if you're a fan of podcasts, go subscribe to my free podcast, Fill in the Blanks. We'll see you tomorrow. A child left in a daycare van dies just feet away from the entrance, and it isn't the first hot car death in Florida this year. Plus, 24 hours, that is how much time a serial killer has to live. How the victims' families are feeling tonight. 10 News at 5 starts now. Developing tonight, there is an investigation going on after a baby has died inside of a hot daycare van. The child's mom called to check on her five-month-old daughter, then rushed to the daycare. Workers said they had not seen that child. The mom found her daughter not breathing inside of the daycare van, still strapped into her car seat. Deputies believe the child had been left in that hot van for about five hours. They say the state attorney is now reviewing this case. And that makes the third child that has died in a hot vehicle so far this year in Florida. The first death in the entire country happened here in Florida. It was a 14 month old boy that was followed by the death of a two year old girl in the panhandle. Tonight, lawmakers are working to get new legislation on the books to prevent hot car deaths. CBS's Hillary Lane tells us that last year, 52 children died in hot cars, tragedies that advocates say are completely preventable. I cry every day for Chase. Miles Harrison says he still has not forgiven himself for the death of his son Chase in the backseat of the car. It started to hit me that I had killed my son. I did it. My poor sweet little boy. Harrison's story isn't unique. Last year, a record 52 children died after being left in hot cars. Mistakes parents say they thought would never happen to them. My husband and I vowed to never tell anyone that this had happened to us because there is so much shame. Now lawmakers and advocates are pushing the Hot Cars Act bipartisan legislation that would require all new cars to be equipped with an alert system. You have to have a warning when you leave your car. You should get that warning if you leave a child in a car. Several car makers have already incorporated rear door alerts to remind parents they put something in the back, but lawmakers want it on the books. This legislation is so important to guarantee the health and safety of children. Bryce was just an unbelievably happy baby. Raylynn Balfour's nine month old son died after she accidentally left him in the car. Hold on. She now educates other parents about the risks to children. The temperature can go up 10 degrees every five minutes. They can die or go into heat stroke very quickly. Safety experts recommend putting something like your cell phone or one of your shoes in the back seat so that parents are forced to look before they lock. Hillary Lane, CBS News. And it's not just our kids. You have to remember your pets as well. I'm sure that you've seen dogs left in cars. Not okay. This weekend, it's forecasted to be over 90 degrees, 10 minutes inside of the car. That temperature is going to reach 109 degrees after 30 minutes. 124 degrees. You are allowed by law in Florida to break into a car to rescue kids, the elderly, those who are vulnerable, including pets, if you think that they're in danger. Before breaking a window, you do have to make sure that the car is locked, that you've called 911 before or after the rescue, and you must stay with the person or animal until first responders get there. And we do have all of this information up on our website, WTSP.com. You know, you heard her say it's important to leave something like your cell phone, your purse yeah. in the back seat. One of the best things that you can actually do, though, is a visual cue of that child in the front seat. Right. So their baby blanket or, you know, for me, I have my son's cooler for the day and it's right there in the front seat. I mean, you don't think you would ever forget. I mean, it's the most important thing, but you get out of a routine. Distracted. Different timing, phone, different time of the day. You're not supposed to be in there. It, it can happen. It can happen.
And so we, we told you, you know, the forecast, obviously in the 90s, the average high temperature is about 89 degrees right now. So all summer long, it's hot for us, but you can see it does vary according to what the outdoor temperature is versus how warm, of course, it gets on the inside. This is 10 minutes, guys, 85 degrees to 90 degrees. That's almost 110 in the car in 10 minutes. But then 30 minutes later, we're going to be between 90 and 95 for the better part of a week, to be honest with you. After 30 minutes, you're talking 120 to 130 degrees in the car. An hour that goes up almost to 140 degrees. What happens is sunlight and the heat from sunlight is at a higher wavelength. That can get through the windshield, but as heat radiates back out off the dash and inside, that comes off at a different wavelength. That cannot come back out through the windshield, so that heats up the inside of the car. A stone cold callous murder. I hope it's painful and I hope you burn in hell. We are just one day away from the execution of serial killer Bobby Joe Long and loved ones of those he murdered are preparing for the journey to see this all take place. 10 News reporter Emerald Morrow has been in touch with these loved ones of the victims over the last few weeks and Emerald tough for anyone to imagine how these people must feel as they prepare for tomorrow. Katie, there is no other way to say this. This is a very tough time. Now I've talked to the families of two victims today and they all hope seeing this man die will give them the closure they've been seeking for nearly 35 years. Now there's a lot of anxiety and all of those emotions that have been buried for all of this time are resurfacing. I'm just waiting for that time and I want to see the look on his face. I want to see the pain coming on his face, what he inflicted to my daughter and those other women. He didn't have any right to do that. This is Lula Williams and her daughter Chanel was one of at least 10 women Bobby Joe Long brutally murdered back in 1984. Lula and her other daughter sat down with me when they first found out about the execution and today they're taking the time to mentally prepare themselves to see Long take his last breath. This is a moment they say they've been waiting for for more than 30 years. I don't have any pity for him, no nothing, nothing. He's getting what he deserved. The killer. Mm. Do you all forgive him? Maybe, maybe one day, but honestly, I, I can't lie. No, no, I don't. I feel for all these years, mm -hmm. I have been taking care of the person that took my sister away. Mm -hmm. I have been providing medical, food, and shelter for him. And it's, it's just not, it's not right. Now, all that care will come to an end tomorrow, just after six o'clock. That is when the state will execute long via lethal injection. And we will have team coverage of tomorrow's execution right here on 10 News. And we will hear from more of his victims, loved ones right here at six o'clock. You might have watched this on our 10 News WTSP Facebook page. The tearing down of the SunTrust Bank in Sebring, a place full of bad memories. This is where five women were murdered this past January, and it's nearly gone. Demolition crews tore away at the building today, and people from the community, they stopped and watched. 10 News reporter Eric Glasser shows you why for at least one woman who used to work at this bank, this is a major step toward healing. It helped. Yeah, I'm glad to see it go down. Peggy Thornton wasn't alone. She and others driving by, compelled to see it for themselves. Demolition of the SunTrust Bank branch in Sebring, where five women were shot to death this past January. There was a lot of good people um, that worked there. So, um, it's a painful. Thornton isn't just a Sebring resident. She worked at the same bank branch for three years, was friends and co-workers with two of the women murdered. Passing the building for months has been a difficult reminder of the horror that unfolded here January 23rd. That's when officials say gunman Zephan Zaver opened fire inside the bank for no apparent reason. A short time after the shooting, SunTrust Bank made the decision not to reopen the branch here along US 27 in Sebring and instead tear it down. I just think that it would be hard for the community to walk back in there. It'd be hard for the employees, it'd be hard for the community. Thornton hopes that seeing the bank being demolished will be another step in the healing process, not just for her, but for friends, family, and the entire community still reeling from such a senseless tragedy. I do, I do, for everybody. It's because it holds a lot of painful memories for people. 
Developing tonight, a battle over better housing for our military and their families. A new report shows that military housing is filled with mold, pests, and structural problems at bases all over the country, including here in Tampa Bay at McDill Air Force Base. This is a story we have been covering for months now, and now we are getting a much bigger picture. Amy Norquist shared these pictures of the mold growing inside her base housing. This was back in March after she testified before Congress that these problems are making her children sick. She is far from alone. It is happening at military bases across the country where families have shared pictures of similar problems, including insects and rat infestations. The survey released overnight by the Military Family Advisory Network reviewed responses from nearly 11,000 families. More than half give their private military housing a negative rating. Let's get more specific now with Just McDill. On a scale of one to five, families rated their housing at about 2.2, with five being the best. Many said they had issues with maintenance and mold, climate control and structural concerns. The amount of money they get for housing and management issues also made that list. The report recommended a couple of solutions. Creating a tenant bill of rights is one of them, and that's what the Department of Defense has started working on. They started back in March on that. And creating a registry of health problems caused by poor living conditions on bases. The Army is already doing that, but the Military Family Advisory Network wants the Department of Defense to extend that to all branches of the military. Governor Ron DeSantis is calling for a sweeping review of election system security and cybersecurity across the state. This comes in the wake of Russian hackers accessing two Florida voting databases. DeSantis wants to ensure Florida's election infrastructure at the state and the local level is protected. The governor is having Secretary of State Laurel Lee initiate the review. Since 2017, the Florida Department of State and the supervisors of elections have invested millions of dollars into election security. The war of words between President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is heating up. The two met briefly today to discuss a possible $2 trillion infrastructure proposal. The president walked out of that meeting. Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. President Trump held an impromptu press conference at the White House Wednesday after walking out of a meeting with top Democrats. Instead of walking in happily into a meeting, I walk into look at people that had just said that I was doing a cover-up. I don't do cover-ups. Sources tell CBS News the planned infrastructure meeting with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer lasted only a few minutes. The president was reportedly irate after hearing comments Speaker Pelosi made earlier in the day. We believe that no one is above the law, including the president of the United States, and we believe that the president of the United States is engaged in a cover-up. The president is now threatening not to work with Democrats on bipartisan policy issues such as infrastructure until they stop investigating him. This whole thing was a takedown attempt at the president of the United States. Wednesday morning, House Speaker Pelosi held a meeting with her Democratic caucus to update them on ongoing investigations. Some are calling for impeachment proceedings against the president to begin. In the public domain, this president is obstructing justice and he's engaged in a cover-up and that could be an impeachable offense. Several different House committees continue to investigate the president on topics ranging from obstruction of justice to his personal finances and House Democrats have accused the Trump administration of blocking their efforts. On Tuesday, the White House instructed former White House counsel Don McGahn not to testify before the House Judiciary Committee about the Russia probe. The person in this picture may not be who you think it is. You may remember the controversy surrounding this photo. It shows what appeared to be Virginia's governor, Ralph Northam, in blackface, standing next to someone in a Ku Klux Klan uniform. This is from Northam's medical school yearbook page. After months of investigation, a law firm was unable to determine whether the governor is in that picture. Lawyers noted, though, that Northam made inconsistent public statements about it. It only takes one. That message from Tampa Police Chief Brian Dugan. It's time to feel whole with Advent Health. To learn more, visit AdventHealth.com. Now is the time to upgrade and better protect your home with Armor View Window and Door. Call, click, or visit and receive 33% off all Armor View Windows and Doors. Trust the experts at Armor View, the clearly stronger choice for you. Hi, this is my friend Jane from Frontier. 
And this is how she fixed the fixer-upper. The McGee's just moved into a house they plan to DIY. But what in the heck did they buy? They called Frontier, soon Jane was here. Gave them lots of speed to stream how-tos and ditch those money pit blues. Now it's home sweet, high-speed home. Count on our 100% fiber optic network when you move for the speed you need. You've got a friend on the digital frontier. Our Memorial Day sale is on. Save up to 50% off storewide with 12 months of interest-free financing and 20% off all accessories. Plus, enjoy instant savings on the famous brands you know and love. Modder Brothers Furniture, bring your Florida lifestyle home. Kick off this summer with a great deal on some of our most popular vehicles at the Honda Memorial Day sales event. Now it's your chance to get an outstanding vehicle with a great offer. Honda was awarded 2019's Best Overall Brand by KBB.com. Visit your Honda dealer today for a great deal at the Honda Memorial Day sales event. Ready for summer? Nissan is. You can't miss out during the summer of SUV sales events. All you need is a great camera, the right tunes, and a change of scenery. Save on it all at Nissan Summer of SUV Sales Event. Get total possible finance savings of $3,505 on road, or get up to $1,500 holiday bonus cash on top of existing offers. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. How are we going to fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. Current eligible non-GM owners and lessees get 19% below MSRP on most 2019 Buick Encore models when you finance through GM Financial. That's just over 5,000 on this Encore Preferred. Who will be the 10 News School of the Week? Watch each Friday morning during 10 News Brightside for live reports and unique stories and learn how you can nominate your school. It's the 10 News School of the Week, powered by Duke Energy Florida, energizing education. Now is the time to upgrade and better protect your home with Armor View Window and Door. Call, click, or visit and receive 33% off all Armor View Windows and Doors. Trust the experts at Armor View, the clearly stronger choice for you. Transmission running rough? Get it checked for free at Amco. Problems? Precision Garage Door can help with a fully stocked warehouse in the largest fleet in the Bay Area. Precision Door service, a name you can trust. You've heard there's no I in team. The city of Tampa wants you to be part of their efforts to be ready for hurricane season. They're encouraging you to sign up for text alerts by sending Tampa Ready to 888-777. They're reminding you that you need to know your evacuation zone. Get stocked up now on supplies like those radios, flashlights, ice chests during the tax holiday, which is coming up starting May 31st. City leaders also want you to heed their warnings and really to take them seriously as a storm approaches. We learned a tremendous amount from our Irma. You know, if you recall, all the water in the Hillsborough River went out into the bay. And, you know, so much of Bayshore was nothing but mud. And people were out there congregating and it turned into a bit of a game. And they don't understand the dangers. And, and if you don't think we dodged a bullet in, in Irma, then you just weren't paying attention. While 2017 was a learning opportunity, Floridians will not forget 1992. That year was an El Nino year, and it was the same season that brought Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew did significant damage in the state of Florida. It was a below normal year, so that's why I always like to emphasize, forget about whether or not we talk about it's going to be an active year or a below normal year or a near normal year. It only takes that one storm to deliver an impact and to change our lives forever. All season long, you can check what's happening on WTSP.com slash hurricanes. Now's the good time to get that 10 News app as well because yes. you'll get those alerts. But Be an ready. El Nino year 
as we said, does not mean we are not going to see a major storm. No, it does not mean that at all. The, the number of average number of storms per year is 12. So that means storms that get a name, so a tropical storm or higher, could still be a hurricane, but 12 of them, that's the average. In 1992, we only had seven because El Nino years, and sometimes, not all the times, they cause more wind shear, so it's just harder to make storms. But the very first one didn't even occur until August. We've already had one so far this year. First one that year didn't occur until August, and it was Andrew. So we know the big difference that one storm can make. El Nino is, part of it is this warm water here out in the Central Pacific. It has to get warm, and then the atmosphere actually evolves around it with the winds. What happens is, is this warmer water drifts off towards the east, and eventually in the Atlantic, it causes more wind shear. Instead of a hurricane being able to grow up and expand outwards, it grows up, it gets into that wind shear, and it gets sheared apart. That's what can happen. That does not mean, though, because we have a weak El Nino, that we couldn't see a storm pop up anyways, obviously 1992. Now, here's a look at the season. We're, we're just about here. June 1st is when it gets started. Five years in a row, guys, we've started with an A storm before June 1st. This year was Andrea. Now, you can see we really get going in August. That's when a lot of the water starts to heat up. But this time of year, we start looking in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean, and even in the Bahamas for development. That's early June and July. All right, quiet there now getting actually relatively quiet across the central U.S., but still some storms just starting to fire up here in parts of Oklahoma. That'll extend out into Missouri. Does that sound like a broken record? It is. They will keep dealing with it. The flooding will get worse for folks. Guys, this is going to be a major story for a week. A week, because this is going to look like it's going to reload. We stay hot and dry. Big high pressure here. All the moisture is going to stay back out to our north and the west. Our skies, yeah, they look pretty clear. Just a few low clouds out there. You're not going to see a bunch of high clouds over the next week because they're up there where the, well, they're not. The air is sinking, and that's where that high pressure is aloft, keeping us not only sunny, but hot. 93 degrees. Dew points in the 60s. Rain, there's not much on there at all. And isolated showers possible right along the immediate coast. Manatee and Sarasota County as well, too, this evening. We're seeing a, one or two trying to pop up there in western uh, Manatee County near Bradenton, but I think it's just a really small chance. The numbers are just hot. I mean, I've seen 94 so far today in Tampa. The record is 95. We may have briefly hit that, but I think so far it was 94. Same thing in Sarasota and Bradenton. And uh, no changes through the extended forecast. I mean, 73 tonight. Sun sets at about 817. Forecast for tonight shows not much rain at all. Less than what we've even seen the last couple of days, and that was only one or two. That's tomorrow afternoon. I think that's even overdone. Friday, the model doesn't even show anything. So, yeah, just hot and dry through the weekend, guys. Now, boating looks better because it's warm, obviously, but look at the water, 86 degrees. Tomorrow and Friday, the winds pick up a little bit out of the northeast to east around 10 to 15 knots. So I'll go light chop, but late in the day, it is going to get a little bit on the bumpy side. Seven-day forecast. Look at your Memorial Day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, close to 94 each day, 70s in the morning, and rain chance, extremely slim. We've seen this nasty stuff down south, but blue-green algae is a new one for us closer to Tampa Bay. Unlike red tide, this algae stinks. Want to know more? 10 News reporter Madison Allworth's got you covered, and she breaks down the difference between this algae and red tide. Algae is popping up in Sarasota Bay. This time, it's not red tide, it's blue-green algae but it smells and there are things that you need to know about this algae. When it comes to exposure, the Florida Department of Health recommends staying away from both algae. As for swimming, taking a dip in water with either algae is dangerous and not recommended. You can get rashes and eye irritation. And how about our fish friends? Well, you need to avoid almost all shellfish and most fish that are near red tide. And even though fish and blue-green algae don't get toxins in the edible parts of their body, the Florida DOH says it's safest to stay away from those fish too. $20 million. That was the gift given to USF by its outgoing president. What she gets in return. Ashley Home Store's Memorial Day mattress sale is going on now. Hurry in and save up to $700 on select Tempur-Pedic adjustable sets. Or get 0% interest for 8 whole years and enjoy next day delivery 7 days a week. Ashley Home Store. Jeopardy legends held records that stood the test of time until James Holzhauer knocked them all down except one. Now he's chasing Ken. Tonight at 7.30 on 10. 
a volatile daughter. I saw the videos. I saw her attacking people in the hotel. My life is at risk. I don't know where you came up with that. She will kill me. New Dr. Phil. Tomorrow at 4 on 10. The Memorial Day sales event is here. You know exactly what you want. It's time to make your move. Get the best deals of the season on a new Ford truck. Now get zero for 72 or 11,000 total savings on a 2019 F-150. Save big during Honda's Memorial Day sales event. Honda's cost less than the competition from just $169 a month. Honda, I like it. Get Memorial Day savings now through month end on every new Honda. Drive Civics, $169 a month. Accords or CRVs, $249 a month. Or save thousands with 0.9% financing. Don't miss the Memorial Day sales event through month end at your local Honda dealer. Honda, I like it. Oh yeah, I like it. People often ask me, how much money do I have to pay you up front to be my personal lawyer? The answer is nothing. It's free unless we win. What about a slip and fall or car crash case? Free unless we win. We have recovered billions in settlements and verdicts over the years. We have never taken a fee unless we've won the case. Our service is free unless we recover for you. You can hire the largest personal injury law firm in the world as your personal lawyer for free unless and until we recover for you. Morgan & Morgan, for the people .com. It's an exciting time at Kia with great products. All of our amazing vehicles come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty and advanced safety features. And during our summer sticker sales event, hurry in to get 0% APR for 66 months and up to $2,000 additional cash on specially tagged 2019 models. Visit your local Kia dealer, look for a sticker, and save. Hurry in to Kia's summer sticker sales event today. I was your hero growing up. Play for 024. Play for your childhood home. Where you get stuck in traffic every day. Your numbers are waiting to win with draw games from the Florida Lottery. Try these exciting games today. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket. Claim it! The Memorial Day sales event is here. You know exactly what you want. It's time to make your move. Get the best deals of the season on a new Ford SUV. Now get zero for 60 or 5,000 total cash back on Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Let our aggressive attorneys represent you for your personal injury case. Our firm will send an attorney, not an investigator, legal assistant, or paralegal. Winters and Yonker. This morning, USF announced it is receiving a historic gift. A major gift. It is one that will directly impact students on campus. Take a listen. The gift is a $20 million gift. Count it. Mm -hmm. This gift was generously donated by USF System President Judy Ginshaft and her husband, Stephen Greenbaum. The $20 million will go towards a new honors college at the Tampa University, and the new program will Hills Pet Nutrition this year. But it is one of several brands of dog food that have had this same problem, putting pets at risk of getting really, really sick or even dying. 10 News and reporter Liz Crawford talked to a Northport woman who had to put her medical service dog down after he ate the recalled dog food. Now that woman is joining a nationwide push for more regulation of pet food. He stuck to me like glue. We were obsessed with each other. Uh, we did everything together. Uh, he kissed me all the time. He took care of me. In a matter of three days, Kelly Bone's medical service dog, Duncan, became so sick. He woke up and he was vomiting white foam. And then uh, he started tremoring really bad. And then he vomited for six hours. And then uh, he got very lethargic and um, was yelping. She had no choice yep. but to put him See, down. It's time. left a big hole in my, in my life. I Only after did she learn his illness was related to recalled away. Hills dog food. Since then, she's been trying to get the word out about dangerous pet food. I can't advocate for my pet anymore, unfortunately, uh, but I can help other people who can. And I know that Duncan and I have helped 
a lot of other pet owners at this point, and we've helped save lives. But knowing which food is best for your pet can be tricky. Susan Thixton is a pet food consumer advocate. She says the issue is bigger than just the latest recall. Biggest problem to me in pet food is so many pet owners are actually misled by what's on the pet food label. There are images of a grilled steak or a roasted chicken when, when there's not that roasted chicken or grilled steak in the bag. Thixton runs the website truthaboutpetfood.com. She's pushing for proactive regulation. The FDA only investigates an issue after the fact, after pets have died, after a problem has occurred. There's, there's very little preventative. Until then, Thixton tells consumers to look for two words on a pet food label. When you see the words human grade on the label, that means that that pet food was manufactured per human food safety standards. We talked to a St. Petersburg veterinarian today. One thing she says you should keep in mind, just because a company has a recall does not mean that it's a bad pet food. It means the company is regulating its product and trying to make it better. But Courtney, what's really frustrating for pet owners is this newest recall is just one of many. Yeah, so many that we hear about. And the FDA just announced some canned versions of the Hills Prescription Diet ID Digestive Care were recalled. But the initial recall, this DSP.com slash recall. And speaking of pet owners in Hillsborough County, are you breaking the rules? Hillsborough County wants to remind you about the most commonly cited pet related ordinances that are being broken. They include having all dogs and cats vaccinated against rabies, as well as registered with the county. If you're going to tether your dog to something outside, you must supervise the animal at all times. If you're taking your dog for a walk, make sure your leash is no longer than six feet and that you have full control over the animal. And if you don't, you could be fined $100. Tampa General is expanding to help elevate, alleviate rather, some crowding in the emergency room. Today was the grand opening of the Harbor Side at Tampa General Hospital. This is one of 14 locations in Hillsborough County. The center will reduce visits to the emergency room and it will provide direct patient centered medical home care. It's also going to be easier to get cancer treatment in Pasco County. Moffitt is partnering with Advent Health. The cancer center will use about a third of the space in a new building under construction in Wesley Chapel. You see the renderings right here. These are 20 exam rooms planned for the outpatient center. Developing tonight, Nevada and its majority female state assembly has just made a decision to protect women's reproductive rights. The bill would rewrite existing state law to no longer require doctors to tell women about the emotional implications of having an abortion. This is how it would look. Physicians would not have to certify in writing a pregnant woman's marital status, age, and written consent before performing an abortion. They would still have to explain the procedure and the proper post-operation care and also the risks associated with it. Nevada's decision comes as a handful of other states have passed legislation restricting abortion. It's an attempt to force the Supreme Court to hear cases that could potentially overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade decision. That's the decision that legalized abortion nationwide. So here's a look at that case and what exactly it established. It protected a woman's right to privacy under the 14th Amendment. Right to privacy is not absolute and it must be balanced. That balance established by trimesters. First, government could not prohibit abortions at all. Second, government could require reasonable health regulations. And third, abortions could be prohibited entirely. One and a half trillion dollars. Let that number sink in. That is what nearly 45 million Americans owe in school loan debt alone. Some of you have asked for answers about how to avoid falling victim when it comes to paying back what you owe. So we asked Liza Lucas to verify. And if you want to look up which debt relief programs made that list, head to WTSP.com. We also show you all the different companies. Lionfish may be cool to look at. There is a foreign invader in the Gulf that is devouring our native fish. Lionfish are interesting to look at, but Katie, they are so destructive. They are. You could say that what the python is to the Everglades, lionfish are to the Gulf. So we suited up with some local folks who are trying to put a dent in this population. It's fishing on a mission. I feel like one of the nights of the round table. Dive, dive, dive. 
anytime you see it, it's just like a pest. You got it. You got to eliminate them. So anybody that's in this community knows it's a problem. The problem: lionfish. You're not supposed to be here, gentlemen. An invasive, predatory fish that's destroying the delicate balance of the underwater ecosystem. These spiny striped creatures belong in the Pacific, but during an aquarium breach in the 80s, they were dumped into the Gulf. Year by year, the population has exploded, wrapping around Florida, up the East Coast, and down into the Caribbean, wiping out native fish populations that may never recover. Oh, yeah. They pose such a big threat to our fish and our reefs, Florida Fish and Wildlife created the Lionfish Challenge, paying people to be the predator for a fish that doesn't have any. We dove along with two groups of local spear fishermen who are doing their part to reduce the population. What makes lionfish so dangerous is that they reproduce like crazy and they don't have predators. So if the lion is the king of the jungle, the lionfish is the dictator that takes no prisoners out here. When you see a lot of lionfish, you don't see anything else. And that's exactly what we saw. Down at 100 feet, we found this big lionfish and no other fish in sight. Now just watch how the lionfish reacts to us. He's fearless, even when we get right up close to him, even when a spear touches him. By getting involved, we are helping to preserve the natural resource that thrives in this area. It's really important for people to, to, to do that and try to harvest as many lionfish as possible. Lionfish can reproduce at age one, compared to five to eight years old for other reef fish. They spawn every four days. An average female can spawn more than three million eggs a year. They can thrive from shallow water down to a thousand feet in all temperatures. They're covered in 18 spines that contain a painful venom. Those are the little stingers, huh? Yeah. This little device is called a zookeeper, and it's basically like a diaper genie, but for lionfish. It allows the fishermen to grab them and stuff them in here, ideally without getting stung. These fishermen never leave shore without at least one zookeeper on board. But as fast as they're spearing them, they know thousands more lionfish are hatching. If you don't take care of this problem, it'll t affect your whole fish supply. So you want to go and get a, you know, a snapper or a grouper at a restaurant, there's not going to be any left if we don't take care of this now. You do not have to carry a spear to be a lionfish predator. You can buy them at the grocery store. Right now, Whole Foods is the biggest seller of lionfish here in Florida. And if you're feeling adventurous, there are lionfish challenge events happening right now. You can find out how to register on our 10 News WTSP Facebook page. Tonight at 11, you're going to meet a woman who is a real champion, and she credits a program that is changing lives in our area. It's called Safe Families for Children, and it's a charity that acts as a substitute for the foster care system, so parents can sign over their kids to loving families for a few days, a few weeks, even a few months. This could be to get a job or even just get the lights turned back on. Tamika Taylor was homeless with four kids a year ago, and thanks to Safe Families, all four of her children were able to be cared for while she found work and a new home. Where were you living? Um, between shelters, my truck, my mom's house. Wow. It was that way for pretty much the whole year. We spoke to a family that took care of one of her kids and who has a little toddler that you'll see. She was staying with them at the time that we visited. She is a very happy child and fun to watch. This story really grabs you by the heart. A lot of people don't know this even exists and they want to get the word out to parents and to potential host families. We can all help to make life better for our local kids.